So hello, we are going to, to speak about uh, suspense RAM in, um, let's say, complex uh, SOCs for uh, automotive. So first, I'm Gregory Clement. Uh, I'm embedded uh, Linux engineer and trainer at Bootlin. So at Bootlin, we do uh, embedded Linux uh, and uh, it's uh, our expertise. We do development, consulting, and also training. And uh, we have a, frong, uh, a strong open source uh, focus. Uh, on my side, I, um, I contribute a lot to, to, to the kernel, so mainly on the Armada uh, SOCs, uh, and I'm still a co-maintainer of this subarchitecture, sub but I also work on uh, bootloaders, uh, and currently, for example, I work on another SOC uh, from uh, Mobileye, and I live uh, in France near Lyon. Um, so, the main use case uh, uh, we have uh, that uh, led us to, uh, to uh, implement suspense RAM is uh, to have uh, the car ready uh, immediately. Um, usually, uh, what we, we hope is uh, as soon as we open the door, then we can use the car. And usually, we don't not want to wait for a dozen of seconds before being able to start the car, or even before being able to open a door. And actually, it's not only the case for uh, the car, but also for any consumer device. Uh, people don't like to, to wait uh, even a dozen of seconds. Uh, but in the, in the other end, uh, complex systems uh, require more time to boot. There are a lot of things involved, a lot of things to, to, uh, to start, uh, many cores to synchronize, and so on. And uh, that's why it's not so uh, easy. And, uh, but thanks to all this uh, complex, to, uh, to um, the fact that people really want to have it ready, uh, manufacturers are ready to spend uh, a lot of money uh, to allow us to work with this complex SOC. Um, so, uh, how to achieve uh, this, um, uh, the fact to, to have the car ready when we want it? Uh, one <coughs> a first solution is to uh, reduce the boot time. So we have some uh, multiple uh, fast boot solutions, like for example, uh, the Falcon mode of uh, U-boot, or we, we can use um, a GMA to, to load the system while doing something else uh, on the CPUs. Uh, there are a lot of things uh, available. Uh, there are specific uh, talk about it at ELC now and every year. And actually, my first talk uh, 15 years ago was about how to, uh, how would this, this, this one, uh, how to boot fast. Uh, however, uh, these solutions are very e efficient, but only until uh, the first init process. Uh, then, uh, as, and especially for automotive, um, we have in user space a, a, a lot of uh, containers, graphical framework, and other big stack, and the, uh, all of them uh, take a long time to be initialized and load and so on. So. Um, Another option uh, is to not boot at all, but just suspend your system. And then, uh, so that from the point of view of the user space, when the, the, the system is suspended, nothing happens. So you don't have any more to initialize anything. Everything is ready immediately as, as soon as you uh, exit your suspend state. Uh, but with suspend RAM, there are still some challenges to, to address. Uh, first, uh, we need to uh, ensure the integrity of uh, the memory, uh, because when we are going to go to suspend RAM, uh, we, are, we want to be sure that uh, the memory won't be corrupted. And we also want to be, to be sure to restore, to restore the hardware in the same state it was before going to suspend. Um, another thing we need to address is uh, the Power consumption. We want to uh, consume uh, as uh, as little power as possible uh, because if at the end we consume as much as a, a normal state, there is no point to go to suspend. And we, the purpose of the, um, going to suspend RAM in this context actually is to just be able to let your car uh, um, shut down or like shut down, and then be able to. to to have it in, uh, as, as long as possible, so you need to consume uh, as minimum as possible. And uh, the last thing we want, to, we want to achieve is to be able to uh, doing a fast, uh, uh, fast resume time. And uh, unfortunately, um, it's hard to satisfy these uh, three items at the same time. So 
we need to find uh, the correct balance between uh, all of them. So uh, what we are going um, to, to see during the, this, uh, this presentation, uh, first, I will present uh, the hardware of uh, the DRA um, 821. Uh, it's a SOC from TI that belongs to the Jacinto family. And uh, there will be a focus on um, the firmware and the hardware that are involved in Suspensura. Then uh, we will uh, see how we implement uh, Suspensurum support uh, for this uh, SOC. And finally, uh, we are going to, uh, to, to, to see the, um, the challenge and the improvement uh, we, can, uh, we can do. So let's see, the, to here it will be a really overview of uh, this, uh, this SOC. Um, so the KISS3 uh, family uh, is a, a multiple course uh, SOC architecture platform. So you see we have a lot of cores there. Uh, let me make. We have a lot of cores there, uh, there, and there. Uh, it's designed for uh, low power, high performance, and uh, high integrity device architecture. And Jacinto is a part of the K3 family, but that targets uh, automotive. And now let's focus uh, on the multi-core uh, processor uh, uh, for this uh, SOC, uh, because that's a part of the complexity uh, we will have to face for suspense RAM. So what we have there. So we have uh, two Cortex A72. A, uh, uh, it's uh, they are ARM64 bits. They belong to uh, the main domain, so it is uh, all this one. Uh, and uh, they, are, they are running uh, Linux, TFA, and U-Boot. Then we have uh, two pairs of Cortex-R5, so one on the main domain, uh, the other one on uh, the, the two other one on the um, R5 domain, the, the MCU domain. Uh, here we have the DM firmware that is running, uh, as well as U-Boot, and also some custom firmware. And uh, finally, uh, we have uh, the uh, Cortex M3, uh, which is called here the MSC, uh, which belongs to the uh, wake-up domain, and it's uh, there that we have the secure firmware that is running. Uh, but for suspend RAM, uh, not only the SOC is involved, uh, we also have uh, two um, uh, components that are very important. Uh, the PEMIC, so Power Management um, IC, uh, which powers uh, the SOC and uh, the DDR. And uh, it will also uh, handle the wake up uh, when the SOC will, will be in deep sleep or even completely uh, off. So it's the only, only component that will be able to capture any uh, wake up uh, uh, event. And um, depending on the hardware design, uh, there might be one or two PMIGs that are involved. The principle uh, will remain the same, and the, just some implementation will differ, but uh, uh, for this presentation, we can consider that we have only uh, one PMIC. Uh, the other component is the DDR. Uh, it's need uh, to be programmed to maintain its data while no longer being driven by the DDR controller. And also, when the DDR is uh, in this state, it uh, allows to consume less because uh, the, the frequency also of the refresh uh, can be lower. Um, <coughs> we have uh, several uh, low power modes that can be used uh, on this platform. So we have the active mode, which is actually the, the normal mode. Uh, in this mode, all core are uh, power, uh, all, all the core and all the power domains are power on. But it's still possible to, uh, to have, do some uh, power management action because uh, in this case, we still have runtime power management, uh, GVFS, AVFS, CPU idle. So it's even in uh, active mode, it's still possible to, to save power. Uh, we also have the MCU mode. So in this case, uh, it's the, the main power domain that is shut down. So that means the uh, A72, so with Linux on it, and also, if we rem you remember, the two other MCUs that are, will be uh, powered on. 
Um, and uh, not only the core, but also all the uh, controller that belongs to this uh, main power domain will be also off. Actually, uh, these two uh, modes uh, were not used for suspend RAM. Uh, it, it would be possible to use MCU mode, but it's not the thing we, we, we work on. And obviously, in active mode, there is no suspend RAM. Um, we have <coughs> then advanced low power mode, the one that uh, we, we use for suspend RAM, the uh, IO retention mode. So, uh, in this case, uh, the Ent entire uh, SOC uh, is off, except, excepting a very small part that will manage to uh, capture the, the GPO, uh, the event of the GPO of the SOC itself, to then being able to um, to exit uh, from suspend. So, if we have time <coughs> uh, at the end of the uh, of this presentation, I, I, I can give more detail about it. And uh, we have also the off mode. So in this case, <coughs> the SOC is completely off. Uh, and uh, so that means that the PMIC is the only uh, wake up source because we shut down everything for the, for the SOC. So <coughs> now let's see the normal boot sequence, which is um, not so uh, simple. Um, we <coughs> uh, I, first, I will uh, mention two uh, important parts of it the uh, TI foundational uh, security, which uh, I'm going to call it uh, TIFS. It's responsible of um, manage, managing the hardware firewall. So uh, <coughs> that's uh, this component that will um, allow to a CPU to uh, access uh, some uh, controller or some, some part of the memory uh, and given some policy. And it will also uh, control uh, the CPUs themselves. So it, uh, this, uh, this component that uh, will uh, uh, allow to uh, start a, CP, uh, a core, uh, stop it, uh, set up the reset, reset vector, uh, and so on. Uh, probably can do more, but for, uh, <coughs> for suspend RAM, that's the, the part that uh, interests us. Then we have the device manager firmware. So this one uh, manage. Uh, a lot of device, and among them, uh, the, the clock and the pin control. Uh, so they are all centralized there. And, um, and the idea is that every time you, you want to uh, manipulate a clock, everything uh, goes through the DIM firmware that, that allow to have multiple firmware at the same time and still have a, a current state for uh, the clock and the pin control. And <coughs> the communication to uh, DM uh, firmware and uh, TIFS is through the TISTI, so it's an API that allows to uh, do the communication. Actually, even when you communicate, you send uh, everything through uh, TIFS, and then either TIFS ju just uh, um, uh, do the service you ask, or just forward it to DM firmware. Uh, so now let's see the boot process, the normal boot process. So. Uh, at the beginning, we have some, the, some code in the ROM that is executed, uh, and, but what interests us is the very beginning, uh, the, what happened uh, in R5. Um, so here, uh, this ROM code, okay. so this ROM code will first uh, load um, uh, this firmware. So typically, here is uh, TIFS, so it, it will uh, uh, load it uh, in uh, the Cortex M3. And so this one will be able to provide the service we want and so control uh, the other firewall and so on. Uh, it will also, the robot will also load and uh, execute um, U-boot SPL, but the U-boot SPL that have been uh, compiled for the R5. So this U-boot SPL will then, uh, so uh, will load uh, the TFA in, the, uh, in memory. Uh, it will load the DM firmware also, and then it will, uh, at the end of the, the process of the boot, it will uh, request TFS to start the uh, TFA on A72. And once it's done, the last thing it, it did, it will jump into uh, DM firmware. So uh, the code in R5 will initially run the uh, U-boot SPL, but then U-boot SPL is just discarded, and uh, what will continue to be executed is the firmware that remain uh, in memory. And 
in parallel, or yes, parallel, we have TFS that, that are going to, to run in secure world, and then it will execute U-boot SPL, but this time in A A72, that will, uh, in this turn, run U-boot, and finally, uh, we, we, we will be able to run your Linux kernel and your, your full system. So, now what we are going to see is what we have done to uh, implement Suspenturum uh, support uh, for uh, this uh, SOC. So first, let's see this, um, this is world, the overall sequence. So I will uh, describe it uh, now uh, briefly, but then we are going to see each part uh, uh, separately. So, uh, yes, let's go. Uh, what happened? Uh, so we will start from Linux because it's from there that uh, we receive the, the, the suspend request. So in Linux, we do a, a suspend request. So typically, uh, we do echo mem in slash uh, uh, sys uh, slash post suspend uh, proc memory. Uh, then, uh, so here we have the, the normal uh, uh, flow. So, um, uh, so Linux will uh, call the uh, suspend handler for all uh, the driver uh, involved, and at the end, it will just perform uh, uh, suspend um, uh, request to TFA. So th this part is pretty standard. Uh, of, yeah, uh, we'll, then um, TFA will execute itself normally, but something which is start to be specific uh, for our platform is that uh, on our platform, um, TFA is executing from SRAM, and so, uh, when the SOC is off, then the SRAM, which is part of the SOC, uh, will be also completely off, so we will lose the memory. So what uh, uh, TFA do is uh, save, it, it save its context in, uh, somewhere in DDR. Then it continues, and at a point, it uh, um, asks DM uh, firmware to uh, uh, put the, full, the, the system in suspend. So at this point, so when we, we switch to DM firmware, so the uh, Linux uh, doesn't run anymore, and TFA, TFA doesn't run anymore, so we uh, wait with a, a, a WFI uh, at the end. So now the DM firmware is uh, the last man standing, uh, which is uh, executed in uh, um, Cortex-R5. Uh, um, <coughs> it copy the important part of the, the, the last part that will be executed, it copy it in SRAM, and then uh, we, uh, the sequence here is to first uh, put the DDR in self-refresh, so in a way that uh, it will be completely autonomous from the DDR controller. And uh, it will also uh, write a spe uh, there. Yes, it will write magic number or a flag in a PEMIC register. And finally, it will ask the PEMIC to uh, shut down everything uh, accepting the DDR that will be uh, maintained at the low voltage. Uh, and then the, so the, the, power, uh, the SOC is off. So when we wake up, the wake up can only occur on the PEMIC because the SOC is completely off. So the PEMIC uh, receives uh, the wake up, then it will start the SOC. And at this point, from the point of view of the SOC, it has a, a, a cold boot because there is no way to, to know that it is a resume. So we uh, have the same sequence that we saw uh, just before. So the U-boot um, uh, SPL uh, starts to run. But uh, very, uh, at the early beginning, U-boot SPL will uh, uh, read uh, the uh, specific register in the PEMIC to look for if uh, there is a flag that we put there. If the flag is there, that means actually it's not a normal uh, boot, but just um, a resume. So in this case, uh, instead of, um, uh, maybe I didn't tell you, but uh, in this whole sequence, it is the R5 SPL, which is responsible to initialize the DDR. And so in this case, we are, non, uh, we are not going to initialize the DDR, but more um, exiting, uh, exiting the uh, DDR from self-refresh. So from this point, uh, instead of uh, uh, like a um, normal boot uh, loading everything, I oh know in this case we are going to load, yes, instead we are going to load uh, TFA and, fir and DM firmware uh, from uh, the storage like the, no the normal boot and then, uh, so we continue to execute DM firmware, 
we jump to, uh, on TFA, but on TFA, and before jumping on TFA, we are also going to write some information in a, a register uh, of the SOC. And so in TFA, at the early boot, we are going to check this register. And if uh, we have the flag uh, that indicates it was a resume, we are going to restore the uh, context that have been saved. And then we are going to jump in the resume function. And then uh, we pass, uh, we go back to Linux. And that's all. So now we are going to see uh, each um, software uh, more in detail. So uh, for uh, Linux, the, sec the sequence is a, is, is a standard uh, and it is done through TFA, uh, so no, nothing specific. Uh, there are still some things that, that have been done specifically uh, in, in our case is um, for each, tri uh, each driver level, because generally the assumption is that the controller is not completely off. We expect that uh, uh, we'll lower the power consumption, but there are still some configurations that sti are still present. And, uh, and, and in our case, it's, not, it's uh, no more the case because uh, it's completely off. Um, so that's why we need to uh, save and restore the register value or the configuration. So we need to put it on a part and then restore them. And another thing that also uh, happen is usually uh, there are some um, devices that are uh, initialized only one time during when you uh, uh, start your system. And then when you go to suspend, they, they still remain in the same, same, uh, same state. Typically for PCI, uh, when you go to suspend, uh, your PCI bus is still there, uh, available. But in our case, it's no more there. And uh, you can't make the assumption that it was only uh, uh, in a good state. So you need to uh, perform a reset sequence uh, that normally you don't do uh, uh, when you just uh, go into Pentaram. So that's the thing we need to take into account because of the fact that uh, the, um, the SOC is completely off. But it, it really depends on each driver. For some drivers, they already save all the context, or for some driver, uh, actually, you don't really need to uh, restore uh, the thing. So uh, it will be, it, it has been done driver by, uh, per driver. The next one is uh, TFA. So uh, by default for this SOC, uh, DFA, uh, TFA re uh, resides in SRAM. It's possible uh, to, um, to put it in DDR, uh, but uh, in our case, it was uh, in SRAM. And as uh, SRAM and DDR uh, are possible, we also need to uh, take care of this uh, specific uh, solution. So I'll explain um, the <coughs> when the SOC is, is off, the SRAM data uh, is, uh, is lost. Uh, is lost, and uh, so what we need is to um, uh, restore, uh, save, and restore the TFA memory. So in our initial implementation was this one. We just completely uh, copy the full SRAM uh, at the place. And then uh, during uh, resume, uh, the EU boot just copy back the SRAM state. And so we can just reuse the uh, entry point that exists uh, in uh, TFA so that uh, to, to detect that it was a, a warm uh, reboot. And so the only thing we need to, to do is to uh, store the uh, resume address uh, during suspend and uh, pass it uh, during resume. Um, but <coughs> actually, uh, there, there are some issue with this. Uh, initially, there was no issue with it. But then um, the, the way uh, um, TFA and the U-boot uh, manage the firewall uh, change. So actually, there was no, not re re really firewall uh, around uh, TFA, or they are not really uh, applied. Uh, but now uh, it is the case. So <laughs> that means that, um, and how it is done uh, to, to be uh, in a secure way is it is uh, TFS that manage the, the firewall and uh, to uh, ensure that what you are going to uh, to put in a, a secure place, uh, uh, TFS uh, need to uh, load um, um, image with a valid signature. 
Uh, and so uh, how it works, you uh, load, uh, yes, more or less load the uh, image you want through TIFS, and once it's uh, uh, loaded, then it will apply the firewall around it. So uh, we can't anymore use uh, the image we have because the, the uh, image of the memory uh, we have because it can change, and so we can't uh, sign it uh, at runtime. Uh, so <coughs> that's why finally, we um, each time we resume, we load the initial ima image that have been signed. So it's uh, recognized by uh, um, by TIFS, and so from the point of view of the firewall, everything is is okay. And that's why uh, we, uh, at the beginning of TFS, then we uh, um, restore just the context that have been uh, saved uh, during uh, the suspend. Yes, so that's what we have here. Now let's see uh, DM firmware. So uh, this one is um, the final software that is executing before the SOC uh, shutdown. So. Uh, what the uh, firmware will be responsible of putting uh, the DDR into uh, self-refresh to maintain uh, integrity, and to send the sequence to the PMIC to uh, for poor management. So, uh, yeah, two things: to first um, shut down all most of the of the power rail uh, to to save uh, uh, power, and so usually we, we just have. Uh, one rail that remains for the DDR and uh, the one that uh, uh, is uh, with a low voltage. Uh, but another thing we need to, uh, to, uh, to prepare is to, to declare which of, of the GPIO of uh, the PMIC can be used as wake-up source. And actually, we only manage GPIO, but it can, it's also possible to, to use uh, the RTC of the PMIC or any uh, thing that is part of, uh, of, the, of the PMIC. Um, we had to move the code in SRAM because uh, at the very beginning, uh, I hope that uh, when I execute the code, everything uh, remains in, uh, in the cache. So uh, it's okay to, uh, to put the, 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 the DDR in self-refresh uh, like this, but it's not enough. Uh, so we need to put everything in SRAM, so we are sure there is no more any access to the DDR while we ask the DDR to go in self-refresh. Um, and after this, the last thing to do is to, uh, to so we uh, store a magic number in the PMIC, so it's because there, there, there was the, uh, the, the need to know when we uh, resume that it was a resume and not a call boot, so we need to put the information somewhere the SOC being off, the only place we can put something is the PMIC. And fortunately, there are some uh, scratch registers in the PMIC. So you can just write something like there, uh, here, and read it back. Um, initially, we also um, put the TFA uh, resume address at a, uh, a known place in DDR. Uh, but then, of course, uh, it was no more the case with the new implementation. Um, for the resume part, actually, there is no, there was no special adaptation um, because when we uh, um, resume, uh, the DM firmware is not resume; it's just uh, uh, booting uh, like a cold boot. And uh, the, for this, the prerequisite was that um, the device that are managed by DM firmware uh, was deactivated by Linux during suspend. And so that means that uh, when you go back to, uh, to Linux, then Linux will uh, take care of to resume uh, all of them. So we don't need to maintain any information inside the firmware. Uh, all uh, the context, the device activation are uh, managed by, uh, by Linux. Um, so that, as I said, so the uh, DM firmware boots normally and there is no additional step needed uh, for this one. The last uh, part was uh, U-Boot SPL. Uh, so here, obviously, there is uh, no change during resume because during resume, there was no more SPL that is running, so it's not involved. 
but SPL is involved uh, during, um, no, it's only used uh, during resume and is not involved during suspend. And so during resume, um, it's at uh, the very beginning. So uh, the role of the SPL is to detect, uh, to access the PMIC and to detect if uh, we um, came from uh, a normal boot or a, a resume. Uh, it will also uh, do uh, the opposite of what was done by GM firmware, so it will exit the GDR from retention uh, instead of configuring. Uh, then it will take care of uh, reloading uh, uh, TFA and DM uh, firmware. So um, initially, uh, we uh, so as I said, initially we restored the full uh, SRAM. Uh, from DR, now we reload the, we reload the, the uh, initial image uh, to, be, to, to ensure that it was recognized by uh, TFS and then it can uh, apply the firewall around it. Um, we made some optimization is that uh, actually in during boot, uh, during resume, instead of uh, reading back uh, uh, DM firmware and um, uh, TFA, from uh, the, the storage, so in our case it was from uh, EMMC, uh, no, from SDCAR. Uh, we just, uh, during, so it's during normal boot, we just uh, uh, keep the copy of them inside memory and then we reuse them uh, directly from the DDR and no more uh, from uh, the storage. So, that was we managed to, to, to do, but uh, actually we uh, found some issue and also uh, some improvements. Uh, there, are uh, there are some improvements that are still to be done. Some of them have already be uh, already done. So something I did not mention is uh, actually uh, we need to ensure globally that. Uh, when we are, we are going to, um, to suspend, as uh, uh, we, uh, we, we need to be sure that every information that uh, was in the cache will be flush in the uh, GR because as the so all the core will be shut down, then their cache, the information in the cache will be lost. So we are be sure to synchronize this. So we ensure it for uh, uh, L1 and L2 cache because actually uh, it was um, yes, easy because it's part of uh, the, the ARM implementation, so there are a uh, standard way to do it. But the L3 cache is managed as uh, SOC level, so it's not at the same, uh, same so it's really uh, for each SOC vendor that they have the way to, to, to manage it. And um, uh, actually, uh, our initial implementation to avoid this issue was just to completely uh, disable the L3 cache. So uh, not only for suspense, so for the full system, there was no uh, L3 cache uh, available. But then uh, we still wanted to, to be able to use it. So <coughs> we need to uh, access them, but initially uh, the um, uh, access to the registers that manipulate the L3 cache was uh, firewalled by uh, TIFFs. And so uh, we won't be we, we wasn't be able to use it. So it, it was needed to uh, made some change in TIFS to allow uh, GM firmware to uh, access uh, this register in order to uh, disable uh, the cache uh, just before go, uh, going to to suspend. And then when we resume, the cache are unable again. Ah, yes, and. When we disable the cache, automatically uh, the SOC uh, flush them to the to the uh, DDR, and that, that's what we want, to, uh, we want to achieve. Um, there are some other things uh, we didn't realize at the beginning because we are really focused on uh, being able to do suspend RAM, so it works well. But there are some uh, security weakness when. Uh, uh, w w with uh, what we have done, <coughs> uh, so uh, and it's um, uh, we have the f from feedback from the TFA developer when we submit uh, our solution, and um, for example, from the point of view of uh, the TFA developer, the SPL image uh, is uh, not uh, trustable. So even if uh, I, may, I didn't mention it, but 
uh, when we boot, um, the, um, uh, everything is signed and is, uh, is uh, checked by uh, each component. So we have TIFS that uh, checks that uh, the SPL image is signed and so on. So normally, uh, the, every, uh, every, uh, all the things we have are safe. But uh, from the uh, TFS standard, uh, the code in uh, SPL is not uh, safe uh, enough by itself. So, uh, and there are some um, concerns about the fact that um, even the context of TFS was accessible during resume uh, because we put it somewhere in DDR. Uh, but there, in theory, there is a, a slot during time when um, just before uh, um, TFA was executed, so at the beginning of the execution of SPL, the uh, uh, memory, the context of the, of the DDR is uh, readable by everyone uh, and because the hardware was applied to light. So uh, one solution is to uh, encrypt uh, TFA uh, during uh, suspend. So, uh, it's allow two things. Uh, it's allow the confidentiality, so no one can be, be able to read it uh, during resume because it have, it have been uh, encrypted while actually uh, the uh, the part of the memory was already firewall. And when the part of this memory is no more firewall, it is encrypted. And so, it is encrypted. It also uh, ensure uh, the integrity of the data. Um, but for this, we need uh, someone to do this. And so um, we, one solution uh, chosen was to use a TFS as an uh, encryption decryption agent. And, but that means some uh, change in TFS to, uh, to, uh, to support this feature. Um, the, and, uh, yes, and, but uh, we can't, uh, TIFS, as it is, it's uh, very simple things. And uh, um, he, when you when you boot, uh, it's the normal TFS that is boot, and uh, TFS is not aware of the fact that we resume or not, and it can't do it easily uh, because first, uh, when it boot, the DR is not available because we uh, we didn't do the, the seconds to uh, exiting from retention. And also uh, in TFS, we don't have access to the PMIC because that means we you also need to implement the ASQRC support and a lot of things. So that, that, that would mean a lot of things inside TFS, so uh, DDR management and uh, PMIC access. So the solution for this was um, uh, to, uh, to, to keep SPL to exiting the DDR from retention and to detect the fact that you resume. But in the same time, um, uh, and TFS will still decrypt uh, TFS. So the, the, the flow now, or not now, the, the, what the flow would be is we exit from uh, resume, uh, we um, um, exit the DDR from retention, and then uh, SPL will tell TFS, so now it's resume, and, there, uh, and it's TFS that will automatically uh, decrypt uh, uh, the um, uh, TFS, and at the same time, apply the firewall. So it's safe, and then you can go back to your normal execution. So that means uh, a collaboration between SPL and TFS, and a new uh, set of uh, call. Um, ah, yes. Uh, there are those, another uh, thing we didn't address. Uh, if you remember, I said that in R5 core, there, are, there is the DM, DM firmware, but you can also put some custom firmware. And until now, they were completely out of the scope. And, um, but uh, we need to uh, manage them uh, during suspend and resume. So there is uh, two options, uh, actually. So either um, the firmware uh, um, take care of them uh, themselves. So uh, they um, free and stop the device during uh, the, the suspend, they restore them. They also, if needed, each firmware will 
save data if they use some SRAM, they save uh, it on DDR. And so the, all this firmware will need at the end is just a notification that we are, you are going to suspend and then it should uh, take care of everything. Another uh, alternative is to, uh, that the firmware will be completely un uh, unaware of the system suspend. And in this case, that uh, would be another component, so typically uh, the DM firmware, that will uh, take care of all the device management. And, uh, but that means that we need to have a way to uh, restore uh, the, the firmware context uh, when you uh, resume from suspend. Um, and that's for the firmware themselves, to, to know to, for the state. But in both cases, we still need to uh, um, manage the link communication. So when we uh, exit from suspend, we need to restore the communication channel with this uh, firmware that has running to be sure that we can continue to, uh, to talk with them. And finally, um, actually, Uh, DRA uh, 8, uh, 821 is not so unique in Keith Ray family. Uh, so, um, uh, um, for mo so initially, uh, we, we saw that uh, the other associates uh, 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 of the Keith Ray family do the same thing. So uh, they also uh, completely uh, shut down the SOC. Actually, it was not the case, so that's why we had to create a, a, a specific solution. And because most of the SOC don't use uh, off mode. But uh, now the plan is that some of other SOC can also use this uh, uh, off mode. And uh, also, uh, in general, we still want to have a common code for, uh, with uh, uh, SOC that do off mode and SOC that do uh, higher retention, for example. So um, now the ongoing effort is to have a common base for everything and uh, that will manage uh, the SOC that uh, shut down everything and the SOC that uh, still have high retention. Uh, so that means to have common code in uh, uh, TFA, SPL, uh, Linux. Uh, it's just uh, the DM firmware that can, be, can remain specific for each SOC. So, if you have some question. Yes. Okay. Do you have some numbers on power consumption and how much you save by going into off mode instead of IO retention mode? Ah, okay. Um, actually, uh, it's quite the same thing. <laughs> Between the, uh, we made the, the comparison, and um, th there are some differences. But uh, compared to the the, um, the power consumption of the full board, because even when you're going to to, uh, to full suspend, or even if you use the PMIC to shut down everything, there are still some components that consume power. And uh, the 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 difference between uh, high retention and um, off mode is not uh, significant. Significant. But uh, sorry, I, I will show you something. Yes. Uh, where I am? Uh, no, not this one. So I will do it in a different way. So just to explain you something which, uh, which is specific to, uh, OK, this one. Oh, it's not. Because uh, the higher retention mode for the DRA is different for the other one. Here, what we maintain is only this uh, here. Well, the same for the two, two main domains, but it's just a very, very few part of the SOC. We just here to capture a GPIO and then forward it to, uh, to directly to the PMIC, and that's all. So there is nothing else. So that's why the, the, the consumption is very different. So here the high retention mode is just allow to, uh, instead of uh, using GPIO from the PMIC to wake up the system, you can uh, reuse some GPIO of the SOC. So that's why in the end, the, the difference is, is very limited. Uh, I, I, I don't know um, how it works for the 
other SOC like Citara because for, for the, this one, they, for now, they only implement uh, iron retention mode, which is way easier to implement because you, you can, uh, all the thing we do with the PMIC or the, the fact we have to uh, uh, switch between SPL and TFS and so on, you, uh, then if you can re, uh, uh, keep the information, uh, it's easier. I was going to ask, our alternatives are what, suspend to idle and just shutting all the way off? Do you have comparisons like for power and time to resume? For, uh, for power consumption or for uh, resume time? Yeah, power consumption and resume time. I mean, those would be the metrics that yeah. you mentioned. For power consumption, yeah. there is a, a lot of different because in suspension idle, um, mm -hmm. the, the, um, uh, the control are in low. Uh, low um, uh, low consumption state, but they are still there. For example, uh, at the point, uh, there was a need to be able to uh, use um, the, um, there is a kind of switch that is embedded in SOC. So we need to, to route the packet during uh, uh, during uh, suspend. And actually this, this one was part of the uh, main power domain. So everything it was there. So we just go into suspend to idle. And here, uh, the actually the, if I remember, but the consumption was closer than the active mode. That the, 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 so there are a, a, a big benefits to going to suspend to RAM for this one. But of course, in suspend to idle, the, uh, the wake up is instantaneous because there is nothing to there is no the, all the full uh, uh, boot process that we have. This looks so complicated. It's look. It's actually more like hibernate than a really a suspend. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, but well, but in hibernate you suspend to disk, which is yes, much slower right. to read from than the RAM. And the key difference is you have to keep the RAM in self refresh uh, in this mode. Yes. yes. Uh, actually, uh, this this kind of thing I've, I've been done in the past. From uh, I know that for there are there are few other uh, uh, there are some earlier uh, ARM SOC that uh, when we do this, uh, when we go to suspend, actually we keep the, the RAM and, and everything was shut down, and it was the same thing. It involved the bootloader to detect uh, things. Usually, uh, what we do, uh, we uh, uh, have some uh, pattern in the in the RAM. Uh, here, the, the thing that is more complex is the fact that now we have all these uh, secure things that add uh, extra step that uh, we didn't have in, in the past. So with all those extra security steps, do you realize a boot time performance still with, system, with suspend a RAM? Uh, what, what is the, the boot time improvement uh, with this technology? Improvement of what? Uh, what? What is the boot time improvement? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, f um, I think uh, we. Yeah, let, let me think about the. Um, it was. I think we managed to boot in. Uh, we to resume in uh, less than two seconds. And uh, but for and the cold boot actually I don't have access to the full cold boot of the the real uh, um, things. But even uh, the normal boot uh, without all the stack, uh, it, it's uh, I think it was around ten seconds. Uh, but it's without all the the, the stack I mentioned. And so when we when you you start to add some. Um, um, container and stack and what I, I don't know for this particular system and this particular SOC, but for other one, I know that usually you ca it can take uh, until uh, 30, uh, 30 seconds just for a normal boot. And it, uh, so yes, we, we save a, a lot of time. Uh, for now, we didn't put uh, many effort to optimize it. Uh, there are some improvements that can be done. Um, 
Uh, but yes, we, we didn't. Uh, but we did the uh, first one. I mentioned uh, the fact that we don't uh, read anymore the EMMC, so we can have it directly. Uh, but and then that's all. But yes, it's a couple of uh, And then uh, the thing that take time actually is out of our control. Is um, the it depend of the boot media. Uh, it depends on what is done with the secure part before. Uh, the fact that we have. Uh, multiple uh, ROM codes that are executed before then being able to do something. So uh, that also uh, uh, some, and something we can improve or can be improved, but it, but it will also uh, uh, need some, maybe some hardware change. Uh, so for example, we notice that uh, depending of the SD card we use, uh, we can save a few seconds. So uh, it's huge, but maybe I, I know that we can boot with uh, uh, Spinor, so maybe it's faster for EMMC. That all the things we I didn't work directly on it, uh, but that's some improvement we can do. Thank you, thank you. Um, another question: Was there any consideration given to uh, ECC backed DDR error correction coding for the suspended RAM um, to kind of ensure the integrity uh, if if there were any accidental? bit flips due to noise or anything like that? Uh, um, no, I'm not aware of it, but uh, I don't uh, know. I don't, I, I don't know if uh, the controller can do it. Oh, yes. It's something that happens at configuration. So since you're not changing it, inline ECC will still be active. Then so it should be, it should be secured. Thank you. Okay, so we're done. Thank you.